LinkedIn. It's not exactly the glamorous setting for a Bond film, but apparently it is the new battleground for international espionage. Our chief reporter at The Times has unmasked a Chinese government agent. This spy is still active and targeting thousands of British citizens on the professional networking site, LinkedIn. They're after all kinds of information, from military secrets to cutting-edge science and technology research. You know, it's obviously very effective, and it's, it's a really low-cost way of doing it. <laughs> you don't have to fly around the world, you just sit at your computer. So really quite a worrying development. Concern about Chinese infiltration isn't new. The Chinese government is set on stealing your technology. Whatever it is that makes your industry tick and using it to undercut your business and dominate your market. Chinese state intelligence is targeting the UK prolifically and aggressively and is a challenge for British intelligence agencies. The most game-changing challenge we face comes from the Chinese Communist Party. It's covertly applying pressure across the globe. This might feel abstract, but it's real and it's pressing. But now, what's normally covert is suddenly clear. We can trace how one spy has contacted thousands of people in the UK in an attempt to gather intelligence. So who is this spy? How do they operate? And how can you protect yourself from being targeted? You're listening to Stories of Our Times from The Times and The Sunday Times. I'm Manveen Rana. Today, unmasking a spy, the Chinese agent stealing secrets from the UK. My name is Fiona Hamilton, and I've recently become the chief reporter of The Times. Fiona was previously The Times crime and security editor, a job that saw her cover everything from the Manchester Arena terror attacks to the Salisbury poisoning. But lately, she's been on the case of one person in particular. This issue of hostile states using LinkedIn is something that I've been reporting about for a couple of years. First, in 2021, when a military intelligence officer who's a contact of mine agreed to speak out about being contacted by China over LinkedIn in what he suspected was a spying and espionage operation. Mm. Since then, I've looked into it and done various stories and has resulted in this investigation Obviously, I have to be quite careful about what I say, but what I can say is that Western security services believe that the spy at the centre of our investigation has been targeting British officials in sensitive areas and different sectors on a really quite prolific scale for many years. And Fiona, this is clearly a, a big fish. Tell us about the man at the centre of this spying story. What we have done is an investigation that identifies pseudonyms, various aliases used by this intelligence operative. My understanding is his main alias is Robin Zhang. Other aliases were Robin Cow, John Lee, Lincoln Lamb, Eric Chen and Eric Kim. So the Times is not identifying the individual. That is a move that would put Western spies at risk. Um, but Western security services believe that they are a spy for Beijing's main agency, which is the Ministry of State Security, the equivalent of MI6, our main foreign intelligence service, and that behind a desk, probably at the headquarters in Beijing, this individual has been spamming over several years British officials who have worked in sensitive sectors like defence, security, politics, 
science and technology and academia and think tanks. So his chosen hunting ground seems to be LinkedIn. Just remind us, for for people who aren't on it, what is LinkedIn? LinkedIn is the world's biggest professional networking site. It's got 930 million members and it's the social media site for business networking, really, where people can put their credentials up and look for work. Uh, They can talk with like-minded people in the same industries and they can use it for recruitment. And so his main identity that we've we've named is is Robin Zhang. Who is Robin Zhang? If you found him on on LinkedIn, if if he approached you, who would he appear as? Well, I've got his profile in front of me, one of the ones that he was using. Robin was listed on LinkedIn as working for a security company in Shanghai. Uh, Limited information, but certainly profile photographs. Now, my investigation showed that uh, one of them for the Robin Zhang character was a passport stock photograph. It's a very useful generic stock image of a man wearing a suit uh, who could look like a recruitment consultant, I suppose. He had more than 500 connections on LinkedIn, so that might be something else that people might think was credible because it shows someone who is prolific on the site. It shows he was educated at a Chinese university. It also shows his profile that he was educated between 2009 and 2010 at King's College London, which is, of course, one of our most prestigious universities. I have contacted um, King's College London. They say that due to data protection reasons... Uh. They're unable to confirm or deny whether he was ever educated there. And it's a really very generic profile apart from that. At least one of the profile photos that the spy used was of a real person, an entrepreneur in Hong Kong. Another photo used for a different alias was just a stock image from the internet. Both of the men in those photos are innocent and completely unconnected to the spies. At least one of the security companies on Robin Zhang's CV is also real. It's based in Shanghai, but again, it has nothing to do with these attempts at spying. How did you find him? How did you work out who this man was? When I did the first story in 2021, And I was speaking to Philip Ingram, who's a former military intelligence officer who now does quite a lot of media commentary and he runs a consultancy. And so he was uh, on LinkedIn. He had his previous details of his past jobs on there and he was contacted by Robin. He was purporting to be from a security company. He approached me on LinkedIn and it was a perfectly legitimate business approach. I was out as a consultant um, advising on getting into different security markets. So he accepted the invitation and they started messaging. He was developing this relationship very carefully over a period of time. So, you know, I was corresponding with him on LinkedIn for weeks. And he was asked to write uh, something. He asked me to produce a general report as to how the UK was approaching its counterterrorism activity. Which was quite a sort of sensitive issue. Mm. He was being asked to write this for, for a Chinese client? Yeah. Now, Philip Ingram's alarm bells rang quite rapidly, he says, because there were no details around the company. Having come from a sensitive background, I knew that I would be a target. Therefore, whenever I get these sorts of approaches, I will put little tests in place. And every time I put a little test in place for him, he failed it. So he was already sort of thinking something doesn't quite smell right about this. I tried to arrange to meet a representative of him or his company in London or in another European capital. That was impossible. I queried about how I was going to get paid and it was going to be cash. And that you know, each, each little thing raised an, an additional red flag. And he said he became even more suspicious when Robin told him that we would want to get inside information that isn't easily accessible to anyone. But he cut off contact when he was invited to China. And Ingram has told me that he believes that had he travelled to China to perhaps discuss work on conference circuits and what what he could do for this consultancy, that once he's in China, perhaps some level of coercion is applied to him. Uh. Perhaps there's some kind of a honey chat and you're potentially having to divulge information. Um, So Philip and I spoke a couple of years ago and I've been looking into these issues uh, since...
And he's a really good example of, of how this man was operating. Just give us a sense, though, of, of who else he was targeting. You sort of mentioned that it's both military, it's security, it's also political. Who is he going after? It's impossible for me to say the sort of length and breadth of exactly who he's contacted, but I'm aware of accounts from people in the security industry, of people in the defence industry, and also of politicians and others who have been contacted by Robin or by alleged spies like him working on these kinds of activities and using LinkedIn as a tool to carry out espionage and subterfuge. And when he approaches them, I mean, does he have sort of a, a stock approach? How does he go about it? So there seems to be a bit of a, a standard script in which he very quickly starts to offer money in return for information. He might say, there's a report in this area I'd like you to write about. There was uh, one Western official who was asked to write something on China's bilateral relations with the UK. doesn't necessarily have to be anything super sensitive. Mm. And of course, that's a key thing about learning about how Chinese, the Chinese carry out their intelligence work, which is that a, a lot of the information they're seeking doesn't necessarily have to be sensitive, that they're engaged in an absolutely massive trawl, because the key is trying to understand Western systems, mm. trying to understand exactly who you need to influence, what think tanks are useful, because they might be able to push your agenda a little bit. Because of course, we're talking about a world power that is in a massive technological quest for for domination, really. And does it get any darker than just that sort of approach and we'll pay you some money for a report? You know, you mentioned how Philip Ingram was worried if he went to China, there would have been a bit of coercion or there would have been blackmail. Does any of that happen on LinkedIn? The ultimate concern is, yes, that potentially there could be some coercion involved if you end up visiting China Ultimately, the other issue is is that you could be targeted from law enforcement in the UK. Last month, the National Security Act replaced the Official Secrets Act. It's been completely overhauled and mm. the new bill is aimed much more at that lower level coercion, the creeping work of hostile states and for the first time uh, helping a foreign intelligence service is an offence. And there's a range of other powers in there which might capture this kind of activity. So um, we might be seeing some prosecutions in the future. Do we know what this Robin Zhang character might have been able to learn through a few years on LinkedIn approaching people? Do we know the sort of extent of information that they've gleaned? Well, sources said it was impossible to know the extent of his success, how many targets he has successfully lured and the damage that has been done, just simply to say that it's been done on a really a quite industrial scale. But over the past few years, intelligence chiefs have repeatedly warned that China is using espionage to target the UK's technology and research and to try to erode its commercial advantage. And the approach through LinkedIn in particular, Ken McCallum, the, the head of MI5, warned that 10,000 people had been targeted in that mm. way. I mean, how many of those are coming from Robin Zhang, from this man that you've uncovered? Ken McCallum never said China specifically. I don't think they've ever publicly said that, but it's certainly my understanding that a lot of those approaches were, were believed to be linked to China, that Robin Zhang and a team of fellow spies are believed to be responsible for a very good chunk of them. And do we know how long this LinkedIn strategy has been in operation? Certainly for the past five years or so, probably longer, but it's been used on a mass scale for the past five years. But my understanding is Robin Zhang and his co-workers are still pretty prolific, that in particular they've switched to academia and think tanks where people might not be quite as quite alive so to this threat. Yeah. Uh, people who might not think that they're as interesting as they are, <laughs> but actually they have access to some pretty interesting material. Or indeed people who were in very sensitive sectors no longer work in them, have advertised that on LinkedIn because sometimes that can be quite helpful to getting private work. Yeah. But if you think about when you leave any job, you still retain contacts often with your former co-workers. You know the gossip around the building. You know what people are up to. So just because you've left an organisation doesn't necessarily mean you won't be useful. That's so interesting. And Fiona, this person has slipped up sometimes. If people are being approached, I mean, what should they be looking out for? Talk us through the ways they've slipped up in the past. 
So he was said to be unprofessional and pushy. A recruitment consultant became suspicious and raised the alarm when they were offered between uh, about £6,000 and £8,000 pretty rapidly if they could identify candidates in the recruitment industry, specifically people from intelligence organisations. And there was a particular interest, apparently, in somebody who could obtain original documents Certainly, in some of his targets, suspicions were raised because, first of all, they investigated the Robin Zhang profile photograph and discovered it was a passport stock image. Mm. And not only did it appear to be that, but it was found on a variety of different websites. So we found it on about six other websites for six different purported identities. And then when they looked at the alumni pages for King's College London, they couldn't find any trace of him and they couldn't find any online trace that he was educated at KCL. So, you know... (laughs) make your own conclusions to that. We contacted the Chinese government to ask about the allegation that one of their spies is using fake aliases to target British citizens on LinkedIn, but they still haven't replied. In the meantime, all of the spies' LinkedIn profiles have been deleted, or at least the ones we know about anyway, including the fake Robin Zhang. But it's believed this spy is still active, possibly using other profiles that we don't yet know about. We think that thousands of people have been approached on LinkedIn by this spy or by one of his team, under a number of aliases, including Robin Zhang. If that's accurate, LinkedIn is basically functioning like a leaky backdoor to the UK's secrets and sensitive information. How aware have the security services been about this problem? MI5 have publicly been talking about this for a couple of years. They launched the Think Before You Link campaign in early 2021. But it uses the analogy of a security guard for a sensitive organisation. Now, that individual certainly doesn't have access to the classified details of the information that's being traded on in that organisation. However, they know everybody who works there. Mm. They probably know how the alarms are set, they know office hour patterns and all that basic stuff which potentially could be useful. So it's about thinking about yourself and your vulnerability in a very different way. And, I mean, it is interesting. You can actually download an app as well um, that can help you protect yourself a bit better. If you're on LinkedIn and somebody contacts you and you think they might be a bit dubious, you can upload their photograph and the app will tell you whether it's a stock image or whether there's anything to be concerned about. So there are actually tools there that can help you as well. Yeah, there's a tool. You you can do a questionnaire saying where has somebody approached you and what sector are they from and does it raise any red flags? And there's also reporting methods as well. So you can report to the authorities, um, people of concern. I suppose it's about getting that message out so people can protect themselves. And Fiona, given how easy this is as a method of spying, is it a method we use? Are we targeting people in Russia or China or on LinkedIn? So I'm not going to pretend for a second that our intelligence services aren't engaged in espionage and operations. I wish I knew more about what they were up to. (laughs) Don't we all? (laughs) But... What I would say is that, you know, we're a Western democracy and our intelligence agencies are bound by very strict rules about what they can and can't do. And so this kind of indiscriminate targeting of citizens is just not something that you would expect them to be able to do or indeed want to do. But also LinkedIn's been banned in China and Russia. So there's not even the possibility. No. (laughs) Probably wise, having seen what happens. I mean, for LinkedIn, this isn't something they're going to have welcomed. What what have they said about about your story? So LinkedIn say that they are really really alive to this issue and that they actively seek out signs of state sponsored activity on their website and that they remove false accounts. Now. Between July and December last year, LinkedIn stopped 44.7 million fake accounts at the registration phase, 
although I did ask them for a breakdown of how many were believed to be connected with fraud and criminal activity versus how many were believed to be state-based activity, mm. and they weren't able to provide a breakdown on that. Fiona, a lot of people will be wondering why China is so desperate to get any kind of information out of Britain. I mean, just remind us, what is the current state of diplomatic relations with them? So if you take yourself back to David Cameron's leadership, and that was described uh, as, as a golden era of the relationship with China, we were entering into lots of trade agreements, there was uh, lots of investment, President Xi's visit, there was, you know... Visit to a pub. <laughs> yes. Well, I've been in here a few times, I know. <laughs> Cameron at that time was extremely supportive of the relationship with China, obviously a giant economy and uh, very much focused on investment. But it's certainly cooled in the years since then. We obviously maintain a relationship with them, but suppression of democracy in Hong Kong, aggression in the Taiwan Strait mm. and tacit support for the Kremlin in the invasion of Ukraine have, you know, really changed that relationship. Why is the UK in particular such a good target for them? So we're a key ally of the US, which is obviously a key contender uh, against China in terms of international trade and dominance in, in all sorts of fields. And then, of course, the UK is seen as a really good target because of our world-class universities conducting cutting-edge research. Yeah. China's ultimate aim is to become a technological and economic superpower. So to, to have access to Britain, our various industries, including importantly our nuclear industry, is certainly seen as an important factor in, in, in its ultimate quest. And a lot of politicians have been trying to raise the alarm about some of this. There was even a government report recently by the Intelligence and Security Committee about Chinese influence. Just talk us through sort of some of their findings. Yes, yeah, so this was the Intelligence and Security Committee, which is a committee of MPs who oversee the work of the security services. And this was a report that had been years of work and really made quite a big splash when it when it was finally produced. And they they concluded that China had really infiltrated every aspect of the UK's economy. The committee says that Britain's approach to China as a national security threat was quote completely inadequate. It added that and that our powers that be for many years had put economic prosperity and investment over our security and that there was a need to rebalance that. A lack of meaningful scrutiny, it says, uh, there has been of investment deals that involve China. And it raises fears that UK critical infrastructure may be under threat because of Chinese involvement in sectors like the energy industries. There was a big section of the report that talked about the extent of espionage. There was a little nugget in there which said the Chinese intelligence services had tried to infiltrate the British intelligence services oh, with one wow. of their agents. The agency wasn't named and it's my understanding it wasn't successful, but that sort of shows you the extent of their espionage efforts. But very much it described universities as rich breeding grounds because of the research that's going on and the, the extent of the collaborations between British universities and the Chinese, sometimes in weapons areas and, and areas that could be of military concern, mm. just across the spectrum, really. Now that your story has come out, what's the reaction been in Westminster? When we presented the Home Office with the investigation, Tom Tugendhat, the security minister, he issued a, a warning that indeed Chinese intelligence was using LinkedIn to target British citizens. And he said, it's not just government employees who need to exercise caution, it's businesses with commercially sensitive information, as well as researchers and academics too. And he made the point about the overhauled National Security Act that will have new tools to be able to target this kind of behaviour. And that really is the warning that's coming out of government. So potentially we can see some cases in the British courts. And for you, having spent so long looking into the issue of, you know, going back to the first case that you came across of, of the Ch of Chinese spy sort of trying to uh, approach people on LinkedIn, 
you know, how worried are you now about this situation? Generally, I've just found it really fascinating that it, it, it couldn't be further removed from John le Carré, could it? You know? <laughs> I mean, it's not going to make an exciting espionage novel, I don't think. But, you know, it's obviously very effective and it's, it's a really low cost way of doing it. You don't have to fly around the world. You just sit at your computer. So really quite a worrying, a worrying development. You've been listening to Stories of Our Times, a podcast brought to you thanks to the subscribers of The Times and The Sunday Times, with me, Manveen Rana, and my guest, Fiona Hamilton, Chief Reporter at The Times. You can find all of Fiona's work at thetimes.co.uk or in print. And there's more about Chinese influence in last weekend's Sunday Times. Professor Steve Tsang wrote about the threat of China in UK universities and what we can do about it. We've put a link to that piece in the description of this episode. The producer today was Olivia Case. The executive producers were Will Rowe and Kate Ford. And sound design was by David Crackles. Thanks for listening. See you again soon.